In 1921, a Neanderthal skull was discovered 60 feet below the ground within Rhodesia. Upon examination, it has since been realized that the skull has been pierced by a high-velocity projectile, such as a bullet, to the left temple. Analysis has since shown that this injury occurred at the time of death and could not have been a stray bullet years afterwards. If true, and the source of the hole was indeed a bullet-like projectile, the implications are clearly profound. For how could a skull dated at over 150,000 years old have suffered such an injury? Modern academia states that these remains must be impossible. Yet, according to author René Norbergen, a German forensic authority from Berlin, quote, the cranial damage to Rhodesian man's skull could not have been caused by anything but a bullet, end quote. The rounded entry point of the wound also testifies to the great speed at which the projectile would have been traveling at the time of impact. However, if the find remained unique, it would have been easy for certain fields of study to disregard its existence as a mere freak of nature, a result of pure coincidence. Yet thankfully, and most intriguingly, Rhodesian man is not the only prehistoric skull which has been found to have suffered this peculiarity. A few thousand miles away, along the Lena River in Russia, a skull belonging to an auroch was later found, an extinct species of wild cattle that lived from 2 million to 4,000 years ago. And just like the Cabway skull, aka Rhodesian man, the hole in the auroch skull is missing radial cracks, evidence that would have been left by a spear, arrow, or any other low-speed projectiles. Just how did these two beings meet their fate? Were they really shot by a firearm? If so, what type of firearm? Who had this capability 150,000 years ago? A time traveler? Or perhaps a hidden history here upon our planet? What do you think? Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Who built the Great Pyramids? Why did they build them? If we take known Egyptian accounts as accurate, then many of the ancient structures upon the plateau were designed surrounding the subject of death. A civilization that believed when the sun set, it traveled through an underworld guarded by Anubis. In other cultures, which we believe, re-inhabited sites. Ruins built with knowledge that we will now show far succeeded that which these people, who carved their own identities upon these structures, ever possessed. The Aztecs, although displaying similar primitive understandings of the path of the sun, interestingly shared similar beliefs to the Egyptians. Specific animals connected to astronomical objects are seen everywhere. These similarities in belief structures could be seen as evidence of a seagoing civilization. Ancient peoples crossing oceans, sharing their belief systems with each other. These people who artistically demonstrated their limited and heavily superstitious knowledge of the universe, upon all these ancient sites, sealed their own fate as impostors to the modern discerning man. Once one begins to explore the unbelievable accuracy, the astronomical alignments, the seemingly impossible feats of block placements, you are seemingly presented with a current controversial truth. How could a civilization who clearly believed that the Earth was not only flat, but that all experienced night at the same time, could have possibly known the information which was instilled within the construction of such sites, in particular the Giza Plateau? It should now be becoming clear that the ancient Egyptians, the Incas, Aztecs, Mayans, etc., etc., did not build these sites. However, the sites still exist, and their past function is still there to be explained. Why did so many of these civilizations, placed far closer to these original constructors than us, all agree that these structures were some sort of portal, allowing the passage of gods, spirits, or souls? Why were all these ancient civilizations, who undoubtedly worshipped the original creators of the cradle for their people, obsess over underworlds, portals, and stargates? Most ancient civilizations had belief systems surrounding death, the soul, and the passage thereof. But the strong draw to portals and gateways, somehow allowing the communication with an apparent other dimension, is undeniable. 
it seems so strongly entwined with these ancient people's beliefs, that these civilizations may have been aware of something regarding these amazing structures that we are not. False doors, for example. These doors to nowhere can be found all over Earth, yet interestingly, they are only found amongst the same uncannily astonishing stone cutting, which we are so often noting as indicative of a lost knowledge. Why were these doors created? Have they always led to nowhere? Or was there something extraordinary, once triggered by this precise web of ancient structures, all mysteriously aligned upon our planet? a function so many of these ancient civilizations were completely obsessed by. Many things have happened to our planet during its long and arduous journey through the cosmos to where we find ourselves in the present. Many incredible and sometimes destructive events which we, as a species, are yet to unravel. Many of these mysterious events have thankfully left their marks upon the Earth in many ways upon many of the oldest of artifacts and geology to be found on every continent. Clues left by these clearly cataclysmic events that many attribute to natural causes. However, there does exist many mysterious anomalies. Vitrified forts, melted stairways, deserts turned to glass, areas in remote places where events have occurred and can no longer sustain substantial life leaving a landscape barren and scarred. Although we feel our next item of focus is probably one of the lesser mentioned of the anomalies, which shows a dramatic history here on our planet, but is probably one of the most compelling and little understood of them all. Known as the Devonian concretions, not much is understood regarding these mysterious cannonball-shaped stones, exhibiting a rusty patina many to speculate that they were once of a metallic composition. Often mistaken for fossil eggs, turtle shells, or bones, they are a very common geologic phenomenon in all types of sedimentary rock all over the Earth. We have covered a number of mysterious and as yet unexplained artifacts that were seemingly abandoned in many areas of the world around 300 to 350 million years ago. Interestingly, this is the dating given to the sudden arrival for many of these mysterious and often perfectly spherical so-called concretions. Did something happen at this time in history involving these fossilized, metallic, possible cannonballs? Many of the concretions that are found in the open on hard ground are more oval in shape, as if warped upon impact with the Earth. Yet the spheres that are found embedded within layers of soft sediments are more often than not more perfectly persevered. The most perfectly preserved spheres are often those found within these softest sediments, most notably those found in Bosnia, Mexico, and Costa Rica, found in sandstone plateaus, including a few spectacularly intact specimens found in soft shale faults within Ohio, USA. How were these amazing spheres formed? If geological, then how did they form in so many different areas of Earth, in so many different types of sediment, solid rock, and on open ground, and show, in many cases, the appearance that they were actually once lodged where they are found, rather than to have grown there through unknown natural processes? We always find geologists and academics passionate denial of any other possibility than the predictably rigid supported limited list of universal possibilities, which will only ever accept natural processes, though, thankfully, many are beginning to consider a more logical reality surrounding many of these amazing artifacts. <laughs>